And next to the lunch in the backpack, you pack a brand new strap for the kids. It's clipping. Welcome back. Today we're talking about something a little bit different. Now, it, it is sort of the same because it's a sort of ARG with hidden codes and horror and dark themes, but it's different because it's centered around music. We're going to be talking about Clipping's story series. Clipping, Clipping is an experimental hip hop group composed of David Diggs, Jonathan Snipes, and William Hudson. And while all of their music is good, I want to specifically talk about the story series, which spans a bunch of different albums and has these hidden codes and messages and intertwining worlds. But without further ado, let's just get into it. Now, a bit of a warning, pretty much every single one of the story songs is uh, about a bad person or a bad situation or something terrible happening. And pretty much all of them have someone dying. So there's your warning. Story one is about a police officer whose first day out of the office has him stumbling across a gruesome car crash. It sends him into a depressive spiral, which ends in him assaulting a random innocent citizen. It's also heavily implied that he's racist. So a racist police officer who's assaulting random innocent citizens. Not necessarily the best type of protagonist you want to be following, but that's a running theme in Clipping. Randy begins to drink heavily and transitions into a conversation between him and his sister. It's not clear until a second listen, but you realize that the conversation is a flashback and the person he stumbled across in the car accident is his sister. And even though it obviously doesn't justify anything Randy has done, it recontextualizes the whole song. And we're only just getting started. Let's move on to story two. Story two is definitely my favorite, and I think it is that way for most people. Something that's interesting to note is that story one and story two, despite being from completely separate albums, actually transition perfectly. And that goes for almost every song in the story series. It also starts with the same word that story one started with, Godsmack. This is a story about Mike Winfield, who appears to be a mild-mannered bartender and family man on the outside, but it's revealed through his inner thoughts that he's actually an ex-arsonist, and it seems like he was an arsonist professionally. On his way home from work one night, he notices a car from his past and then sees that his neighborhood is on fire. Running, hoping to save his family in time, he's too late and he goes to engulf himself in the flames himself, but someone from a nearby house stops him. Again, an arsonist is not really someone you want to be following, especially someone who is implied to have killed many other families before, but him having his own family and the way that he's characterized, he's still empathetic. There is no story three. It's kind of a joke in the clipping audience, although it has been said before that story three is yet to come out, which means it'll eventually be out, I hope. Story four is definitely the heaviest, so there's your warning. It's about two people, James and Katrina. It's about James committing suicide and Katrina, his younger cousin, trying to call him. It's revealed that James is trying to commit suicide because of overwhelming guilt he has after molesting Katrina when she was young. And it's implied he did the same thing to his daughter. It also shows how Katrina has been affected in her daily life and how she almost stays with him even though she knows that he's a bad person because he's the only one that stayed with her. This one is even harder to feel bad for James, the protagonist, but instead you just sort of feel bad about the whole situation. In the end, his body sinks to the bottom and just disappears into the water. There's no conclusion, his victims don't ever get to see him brought to justice, he just disappears. Story 5 is where things start to come all the way back around. It's a gospel song about a girl named Grace who witnesses her friend mutilated and then dying in a workplace accident. She spends the rest of her life trying to get information to take down the corporation that led to her friend's death, but in the end she's killed in a car accident in a taxi cab. That sounds familiar. If you're thinking Grace is Randy's sister from story one, then you are correct. Hidden in a song from that very same album, there's even Morse code that when decoded says Grace is Randy's sister. It doesn't get much more clear than that. More songs from this album are important as well, but we'll get back to that. Story seven. What happened to story six? Don't ask. Kimberly, Kimberly couldn't, couldn't believe. believe. The story starts about a woman named Kimberly who finds a video of her boyfriend cheating. She goes to confront him and finds his body has been ripped apart by teeth and nails. Then it transitions to Cynthia, the woman that the boyfriend was cheating with, who is some sort of werewolf succubus vampire. Then it transitions to Randy, aka Randy from story one. He was a private detective of sorts that gave the video to Kimberly in the first place. 
It appears that he's either no longer a police officer or doing some work on the side. He goes to a bar to get a drink and there he runs into Cynthia. They get in a cab, that keeps coming up, but before Randy can become another one of Cynthia's victims, some sort of monster hunter who is the cab driver turns around and shoots Cynthia with a silver bullet. And guess who sees the whole thing from a window upstairs? A girl named Trina, as in Katrina from story four. Is your mind blown yet? Okay, so in general, what do we know about the story series? Well, one, it all takes place in the same universe. We also know cars are an important feature. The blue Acura, the car crash, the cab. It seems like these cars also all precede some unfortunate event. There's also this part, which is insane. And I'm just going to have to read it straight from the genius uh, annotation by Virtual Blaze. Essentially, in story one, it brings up the fact that Randy vomited when he stumbled upon the car crash and that he hadn't vomited since his brother made him drink half a bottle of Pine Soul. Now, that seems like a weird detail, but listen to this. In the track True Believer from the later clipping album Splendor and Misery, a verse states three siblings happen to be gods and they fight as siblings do. Randy, his sister, and the brother that made him drink the Pine Soul. That same verse in True Believer has the line, he vomited the sun which dried. Our sun is also called soul. So there's a link between vomiting Pine Soul and vomiting up the sun. What is going on? <laughs> but it gets even crazier. In story two, Mike Winfield's psychologist is mentioned, someone named Doc Clark. Again, in the song True Believer, there's a hidden message locked behind a keyword, which is given in a different song from that same album. Keyword is camera. That's what your ass need. Like, the message is the target is Amy Clark, as in Doc Clark from story two. Okay, so clearly there's a lot going on here, and I don't have all the answers, and I don't think anybody does except clipping themselves. And hopefully we'll learn more once the new album, Visions of Bodies Being Burned, uh, comes out the 23rd, I think. But for now, here's my working theory. The whole story is about people who've been affected by this mob-affiliated business. It seems a little weird, like a, a stretch maybe, but let me explain. We know in story 1 and 5 that Grace gets hit by a very expensive car after she finds very crucial information that could take down a corporation. It seems like motive for the corporation to get her killed. We also know in story two, someone comes back for revenge against Mike Winfield, and it seems like he's an ex-arsonist, again, professionally, perhaps working for a mob. It would also make sense why Doc Clark is a target. Mike might have told her things that might put the business in jeopardy. There's also definitely a connection between Randy visiting the bar and Mike being a bartender. I mean, for God's sakes, in story seven, it even says that Randy is worried about the bookies coming to break his knees. It really seems like that's the story they're building. But that's where things start to trail off. What about this monster hunter or Cynthia? And what do James and Katrina have to do with any of it besides just the fact that Katrina maybe saw it when she was a kid? Then again, story seven could just be a dream, judging by this line. Also, what is it with Randy vomiting the sun and his siblings being gods what i get the feeling we'll learn more in the new album but until then i'll see you on october 23rd thank you for watching this video about things that i don't usually cover i was just really passionate about the subject so i hope you enjoyed uh, also, if you haven't already, maybe subscribe, that would be nice. Let me know what I should cover next on my Twitter and follow me on Twitch because I swear I'm going to try and stream there more soon. See you all next time.